It's been three years since Jay Watson, aka Gum, released his fifth studio album, Out in the World. It was around the beginning of the pandemic in 2020 when Out in the World released, and I remember just absolutely loving it. I had just gotten into MGMT and Tame Impala, and I was looking for more bands to just absolutely obsess over, and I ended up stumbling across Gum. I immediately became a massive Gum fan after listening to Out in the World. The Underdog, DeLorean Highway, Glamorous Damage, I love all these albums so much. It got me super thirsty for a new Gum album to release, and the wait is finally over, we have gotten Saturnia. Saturnia is a 10 song album around 42 minutes long, and it is just a wild ride all throughout. The first track in the album is Race to the Air, and I don't remember the last time I had banged this much to a song. The beat in this song is just absolutely incredible. I love how the pace just kind of slowly amps up throughout. And something I really love about Gum songs is you'll have a song where like 75% of it will be one sound and then the rest of it will be a completely different song. And I love how Race to the Air just constantly switches back between kind of being a little more chill and mellow and then, you know, speeding up and being a little more hardcore and a little bit more rock focused. Just the balance of electronic and rock, I just think is done very well here in this song. Wait a minute, I just realized if I'm gonna be doing this review, I gotta be doing it in style. That's better. We head to the second song of the album with the track, Muscle Memory. Muscle Memory is a bit more of an interlude track, just two songs in. This one's just over a minute long. It's really like hardcore and intense, a super replayable track. I really have, I've listened to this one probably more times than any song in the album. It's just a great one. Moving along, we get a few songs that are a bit more slow paced. Jay Watson's vocals are pretty much my favorite aspect of his music. I like, I love the instrumentation part of it, but his vocals just, it elevates any song to like another level. And we definitely see that with the tracks Argentina and Would It Pain You To See. Both of these songs were accompanied by really great music videos. I particularly love Argentina's, just a really beautiful atmosphere, kind of inspired me to film this outside. The song Argentina, while not actually being about the country, is a really great song. Jay Watson's repeating, you know, Argentina thing all throughout is great. What It Pain You To See is up next, and it was actually written by Jay Watson around the time of the birth of his first son. So this song is definitely a bit more personal, and then also it's got these beautiful violin strings in the background done by Jay Watson's friend, Jesse Katansky. Jesse's strings appear all throughout this album, and they are just so beautiful, really making every song that they appear in better. And Jay Watson actually also in this album decided to use real drums as opposed to, I guess, a drum machine uh, for the first time in any of his albums. So this album features real drums, as he put it. And those drums are put to work in the next song, Fear of Joy. Fear of Joy is a heavy hitting song. This one is pretty damn emotional when you listen to it. And it actually is Jay Watson's favorite song on the album. Can't say enough good things about this one. I really love it. Other songs in this album, we got Music is Better Than Hair. Again, like I said earlier, this is one of those songs that the first part of it is one song and then the rest of it is completely different. The, the first part of it is a lot more slow and then the last minute of it is this really groovy, funky, upbeat little ballad that he does at the end singing about how music is bigger than hair. It's great. And the meaning of this song is Jay Watson, as he gets older, he says his hair is getting thinner and it's like a big deal to him, but he's like, all right, music, it's bigger than hair. And now we go to the song Real Life, which might be my favorite song in the album. Real Life has a unique 7-4 time signature, sounds great, and I also love the beat and the guitar by Jay Watson. And then it also has these background vocals by someone named Hatchie. I'm not sure who that is, I'm sorry, but um, she does a really great job on this song. I actually thought it was Ambrose, who, if you didn't know, Ambrose Kenny Smith from King Gizzard actually did a few singles with Jay Watson earlier this year. If you have not listened to them, they are absolutely fantastic. Minor Setback and Old Transistor Radio, both really awesome songs. And it's really cool to see Gum and King Gizzard, well, King Gizzard kinda, have like a collab. I really hope we can see more of that in the future. We head to the final stretch of the album with the songs Saturnism, In a Glass House with No Light, and It Lies a Lifetime. Honestly, any one of these songs could have really worked as the album closer, but I'm happy with how Jay Watson did the placement. Saturnism, which is kind of the title track of the album, has a really interesting meaning. If you didn't know, like me, Saturnism is actually the process of being like poisoned by lead poisoning or like asbestos or something like that. It's kind of a really interesting and weird title, um, but I guess it works. Jay Watson described this song as being like a lost alien cassette tape, which is a really cool way of describing it, and I could see it, it fits. Definitely a very, very neat song and well deserving of getting the album title track treatment. The next song, In a Glass House with No Light, is actually a really old gum song. 
Jay Watson said this song has been in his backlog ever since his first album, DeLorean Highway. And it was well worth the wait because this song is awesome. Again, I love how it starts out really slow and you're like, well, I don't really know how this song is going to go. And then it just immediately slaps you in the face. I actually slapped myself there. That was painful. Ow. Uh, it slaps you in the face with the really high paced music. And this is a really great song and a great second to last track. And now we head to the final song of the album with It Lies a Lifetime. Jay said that he always loves to end his albums on a triumphant note. And he definitely did it with this one. He said, again, this one's about his son, a really beautiful ending and a great ending to Saturnia. So that was my recap slash review of Saturnia. If you have not listened to it, please do. It is absolutely one of my favorite albums of the year. Might even be number one. Jay Watson absolutely knocked it out of the park with this one. This album is great. And I don't know the last time an album has made me feel like this happy, but just the overall feeling in this album is great. And you should absolutely check it out. And if you are a Gum fan, you're in luck because he's actually going on tour. He actually might be on tour right now if you live in Australia, so I hope that you already got your tickets for that. But if you live in the United States and I think a few cities in Canada, you can get your tickets right now. I will be seeing him next month in Washington, D.C., and I just cannot wait. Uh, this will be my third, third time, fourth time, my fourth time seeing Jay Watson in some capacity. I've seen him perform twice with Tame Impala, and I've seen uh, Pond one time. So this will be my first time seeing him as gum. Jay Watson and I are actually best friends. We actually met once, just one time, but we're best friends, as you can see from the picture. He signed my album, uh, Out in the World. So he's a really great guy. We, we, we talk all the time. And on that note, I'm going to end this video. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Please check out the album Saturnia by Gum. You won't be disappointed. It is absolutely fantastic, and uh, it gets my seal of approval. Once again, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.